Okay, so this is a, a standard toilet. This is just the sort of type of toilet you would encounter in any kind of aeroplane. And the only difference between a normal toilet is that it has a vacuum assistance. So for our perspective, that means that it's a much smaller flush volume. Like the toilet you have at home probably flushes on five litres. This one flushes on half a litre. And the other thing about this particular toilet, the pump enables us to put food waste and other kind of sanitary waste into the toilet bowl as well. And so that means that we can process those kind of materials in situ, but it does have this extra vacuum component. Which sanitary waste? So you think We're thinking about um, menstrual hygiene yeah. waste oh, yeah. and uh, all kinds of toilet tissue, cotton wool. Uh -huh. The only thing we're a bit nervous about at the moment is half bricks. What we wouldn't like to do is put any half bricks. But plastics? Is, I mean, plastics, as long as... Heads? Yeah, they'll be okay as long as they go through the, through the system. Yeah. So this is the heart of the system really, the, the, um, the part that does the pressure cooking. The waste from the toilet that we've just seen comes into this balancing tank and the idea behind that is that it just balances out the flows that you would normally expect to occur during night time and daytime and enables us to run the unit continuously 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days of the year. And then what happens is that the uh, waste material is lifted from that balance tank using this blue pump which we can see in the background of the cabinet and push, pushes it into the pressure cooker which is this unit here noticeable by its huge big bolts to maintain the pressure so that works at around 10 times normal atmospheric pressure and during that process uh, and because it's running at a high temperature 135 degrees we get complete sterilization of all the materials there no known organism can survive more than 135 degrees so it completely sterilizes it and the other thing that it does for us is that it destroys the cellular structure of the original biomass and that releases the water and makes the material much more amenable to uh, dewatering well, what about the and this particular unit here, we jokingly call this the Ferrari of, of toilets because of its red colour. But all this does is uh, safely release the pressure in the pressure vessel. So we have a double lock, what's known as a double lock valve system here. So the first valve opens and the, uh, a small volume of, of uh, sample or uh, material is released from the pressure cooker between these two valves. It's about 100 mils a time, but it happens every five minutes to give us the flow. The first valve shuts. It's allowed to cool for a little while to reduce to atmospheric pressure and then the second valve opens and releases it into the second, the next stage which is the solids liquid separation. So is this continuous flow or is it... Yes. Uh, yes. It's, it's on pulses, perhaps pulses, okay. pulses, yeah. Rather than it being continuous, it comes in five minute pulses but that's adjustable. And then there's an effluent that... Um, yes. Where that, does that go? Uh, well then that's separated with a solids liquid separation process. So let me just show you... So this is after a settlement, in a settlement tank or by sieving, and we're looking at all sorts of methods of doing this. So this is material we recovered from the plant uh, uh, yesterday uh, during the, the, the process. And after you've separated the liquid out, this is the biochar that you produce. So this material is the second product, and this material is suitable either as a as a bio-coal, some people call it a bio-coal or bio-lignite material, so it has an energy value, but it can also be used as a soil conditioner because all the original phosphorus in the waste is contained in this, this product. So it's a good compost, a good soil conditioner. But how do you normally get it out of that pressure cooker? It, it comes through that double red valve arrangement that we've seen, and then to separate the solids from the liquids, we run it through a sieve normally. So the one at college is running continuously, running down a tumble down sieve. So the solids come off the, uh, on one side and the liquid comes through on the, on the other That's side. That's the ambient, temper um, uh, ambient temperature and pressure? Yes. After that? Yes, after those two valves we've, we've talked about. And so, so that's not implemented in this prototype? Uh, it is, but not for the exhibition. Uh -huh. So we're not doing it in the exhibition stand because that takes a bit more space. But it would fit somehow? How big would it be? Uh, it's about the size, uh, uh, smaller than the chair, it's about half the size of a chair. So it normally sits adjacent. And that's a variable because it would depend on the, the geography and the demand that you were putting it into. So depending on which was the most valuable to you, the water 
or the char, you would vary the type of solids liquid separation process and vary the operating conditions of the plant. So it enables us to decide uh, whether we want this to be the fertilizer component or the yeah. irrigation component, yeah. or whether we want the char to be the product as a kind of a, a fuel or as a, as a compost. And that's the kind of work in progress, but we would be adaptable and adjustable to different types of environment that you wanted to use the toilet in. So this is the Mark I, and if we're going to be able to make this um, affordable for, let's say, a set of flats or a small community down to the washing machine class, how do we uh, modify it? We have to um, take out some of the expense in the, first of all, the sensors, because obviously this is a university model, so we've got a lot more sensors than we probably need. Uh, we probably, uh, again, because we've bought everything from components readily available, that probably means we uh, have our pressure vessel, which is the most expensive part of the system, over-designed, so there, and much of the pipe work can be made cheaper. And once it starts to be made on a mass production scale, then we can't. And actually, perversely, as it gets larger, so if we talk about populations of blocks of flats, possibly um, hospitals uh, uh, already uh, unconnected from the grid, then scaling it up is actually going to be quite easy in comparison with trying to scale it down to the smallest count. So we're reasonably confident with the help that we're seeking that we would be able to get somewhere close to that number we've talked about. That's the ambition, of course. Okay.